Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Big T Anderson, and today we are doing a fanfiction reading from the Digimon fandom. This is called Readjustment. This is Jade Lee Forrest's work. I'm just schmucky duck reading it. If you're new here, thank you for reading, listening. I can't English sometimes. I can English for the reading, just we'll, we'll get to it. I act like a dunce, absolutely, beforehand and afterwards. Anyway, um, links will be down below to the author's work on fanfiction.net as well as just this story in particular if you want to read more of the author's work you have that right i would suggest doing so and if you want to give this story a good review i would definitely suggest that uh if this if the author does not know what they're doing right then <coughs> oh wow if the author does not know what they're doing right it makes it a lot more difficult when writing the next one so please uh make sure you give some love there let me get a little bit of uh A touch of caffeine helps clear the throat. Alright. Ready. This is readjustment. The summer holidays had felt both an age and a small moment of time. Of course, they had lasted longer than usual since Yamato had spent several months in the digital world, while less than a few hours had passed in his. Cramming wasn't really his style, so when the second term began, he could only answer the simplest questions. Many of his teachers and peers became worried. Are you sure there's nothing wrong, Yamato? His homeroom teacher stood in front of him, staring down with a look of concern. The rest of the class had left for the day, leaving Yamato to face the Inquisition on his own. Is anyone at school causing you problems? Maybe something has changed at home. My parents have finally started speaking to each other again, Yamato silently answered. He refrained from sighing. Yamato appreciated his teachers were worried about him. It was reassuring to know that they paid enough attention that his recent behavior was causing concern. He just wished it didn't mean them butting into his personal life. No, everything's fine. I just forgot a couple things over the summer break. I'll catch up before the next test. His homeroom teacher nodded, but didn't seem convinced. Nevertheless, she let him excuse himself, and Yamato left the classroom before she could change her mind. Yamato trudged towards his locker, deftly avoiding the other students. He opened the door and grabbed one of the notebooks from last term, shoving it into his bag. Yamato wondered if the other Chosen were also struggling to readjust to classes. He vaguely remembered Joe saying he'd failed at tests soon after returning to Odaiba. Rather than walking straight home, Yamato found himself drawn to the school playing field. He only realized where his mind had subconsciously taken him when he heard the shrill sound of a whistle. Memories of that final trip out of the digital world rose unbidden to the forefront of his mind. He sat down on the bleachers and watched the soccer game unfold. He soon recognized Tai Chi and Sora, and with a smile, he took out his books in order to study. Every so often, he would look up when he heard the crowd getting more excited. It seemed they were playing an important match against a rival school. Yamato began playing less and less attention to his studies as the match continued. Although he wasn't the type to cheer in such a large crowd, he found himself smiling every time Tai Chi or Sora made a good play. The home team was winning by one goal as they entered the last few minutes. Their rival team, determined to at least settle for a draw, managed to get a corner and moved all their players up to the goal, including the goalie. The audience collectively held their breath as the ball was kicked onto the field. A few audience members gasped as the ball landed at the rival player's feet and sent directly at the goal. Yamato found himself unable to look away as the goalie shoved the ball away but was unable to keep a hold of it. Unfortunately, one of the rival team members got to it first and kicked it back at the goal. Everyone stood up. The goalie was on the ground. The ball looked to be going in. From seemingly nowhere, Sora jumped up and headed the ball down the pitch. Before anyone could process what had just happened, the ball landed at Tai Chi's feet and he sprinted towards the opposing goal. Too late. His opponents realized what had happened and tried to catch up with him. The crowd cheered as Taichi stopped long enough to line up a shot on the goal. Their opponents all jogged to a stop as the ball switched into the back of the net. The whistle blew, signaling the end of the match. Yamato found himself cheering along with everyone else as Taichi ran up to Sora and the two embraced, while still jumping around excitedly. As the rest of the team piled onto the couple, Yamato felt his happiness gradually fade. A cold feeling settled in his stomach, and ignoring the crowd around him, he quickly picked up his books and shoved them into his bag before making a swift exit from the playing field. He told himself he didn't envy them, but it felt false even in his head. 
As expected, the apartment was empty when he arrived back home. He sent his book bag on the table without a second thought and walked over to the fridge to grab a soda. He savored the taste, even the uncomfortable fizziness at the start. His memories of the digital world were slowly fading, but he still tried to remember to appreciate all the food he could eat in his world. Yamato was still studying when he heard the door unlocked. He jumped in surprise, looking straight at the clock, which only read six in the evening. Worried, Yamato stood up as his father walked through the door with a weary sigh. Is everything all right? Hiroaki seemed surprised to see Yamato standing at the table, which Yamato found strange since it was his father who was home ridiculously early. He smiled at him. How was school today? Fine. Why are you home early? Hiroaki sent down his bag by the door. I thought we could go out for dinner. How about that barbecue place down the road? Yamato's stomach grumbled and he blushed. He, his father knew that that was his favorite place to eat after all. Okay, I'm just going to get changed. You got ten minutes, Hiroaki shouted after him. As Yamato got changed into some slightly nicer clothes, he started wondering why they were going out for dinner. He'd been to the store yesterday, so it wasn't like there was nothing in the fridge that he could cook up. Slowly, Yamato became suspicious, although he decided to keep his thoughts to himself for the time being. Hiroaki waited until Yamato took the first bite of steak to finally confirm his fears. One of your teachers called today. Apparently your grades haven't been up to your expected standards since the end of the summer holidays. Yamato chewed the piece of steak longer than was strictly necessary. Hiroaki sighed. I'm assuming this is because of the digital world. Yamato picked up another piece of the barbecue, letting it cool between his chopsticks. I forgot more than I realized. I've already started catching up. What about your friends? Are they struggling too? Yamato shrugged and popped a piece into his mouth. Rocky frowned. You're in the same school. Haven't you been speaking with them? I went to Tai Chi's and Sora's soccer game today. Never mind that his presence there had been a complete accident. His father seemed to see through the white lie as well. The way you've talked about them, I'm surprised you're not seeing them more. How about that boy in the year above you? Uh, Joe, wasn't it? Yamato hunched over, feeling ashamed and embarrassed. He humbled out a few excuses, but none of them really justified his reluctance to hang out with his friends during or even after school. Yamato, his father warned, clearly losing patience. It's strange, isn't it? A bunch of kids in different years suddenly talking to each other like close friends after only spending less than an hour snowed in a cabin. Yamato pushed the food around his plate, unable to look Hiroaki in the eye. Don't tell me you're avoiding them because you're afraid what everyone else will think. I just don't want anyone to start asking questions. Hiroaki chuckled humorously. <laughs> Hate to break it to you, kiddo, but your teachers are already asking questions. Just because I forgot things I knew last term. Once my grades are back up, they'll stop. So you want to go back to the way things were before the summer? Yamato thought back to the digital world, to the friends he had made, especially Gabumon. He remembered returning to Tokyo and having both his parents wrap their arms around him and Takeru like a normal family. How would his partner react if he saw Yamato running away again? Taking Yamato's silence as stubbornness, Hiroaki continued, Who cares if your teachers or classmates start asking questions? I'm sure you kids can think up a good excuse together. Don't waste your youth trying to cater to others, especially when it's making you miserable. I'm not miserable, Yamato countered, but sounded more resigned than angry. Hiroaki put his hand on Yamato's head in a rare display of public affection. I'm really proud of you, and not just because you saved the world. You made some great friends, and I don't want you to lose them because you're afraid. Yamato stayed silent, still contemplating his father's words. Slowly, Hiroaki took his hand away from Yamato's head and turned the attention back to the food in front of them. All right, I'm not going to lecture you anymore. Yamato silently watched his father cook some more meat on the grill, and when his father became distracted, Yamato quickly grabbed it off and placed it on his father's plate before it burnt. You can't just leave it unattended. This is why you're such a bad cook. Hiroaki laughed. Even when we go out for dinner, you're still making sure I don't ruin the meal. Yamato did a poor job hiding his smile with a disapproving frown. He gave up when he realized Hiroaki wasn't phased in the slightest. Yamato politely thanked the lunch servers before turning to look around the cafeteria. He recognized a few students from his class who wouldn't be surprised if he came and sat with them. 
but Yamato continued scanning the area for more familiar faces. After the conversation with his father the previous night, Yamato had decided to try and speak with the other chosen children. Of course, that was easier said than done when they were in different classes. Taichi and Sora were sitting at the table in the farthest corner from the entrance, surrounded by their soccer teammates. Yamato sucked in a breath and steeled himself as he walked over. Sora was the first to notice him as he approached. Her expression surprised but happy. At least, that's what he hoped. Yamato! Taichi looked up at Sora's greeting and their teammates all turned to look at him. Yamato gripped his tray a little tighter, suddenly very conscious. He managed a weak hello, and he felt silent long enough for it to be awkward. Sora opened her mouth to say something, but Yamato spoke first. Good game yesterday. Team seemed to relax while Taichi and Sora beamed. You saw it? Yamato nodded, still embarrassed. That last goal was incredible. Taichi grinned. We're aiming to win the league this year. You're still going on about that, one of his teammates asked, sounding incredulous. There's no way. Not with that kind of attitude. One of the others countered easily and Yamato felt a pang of nostalgia. You want to sit with us? Sarah asked, breaking through the argument. Suddenly, all the attention was back on him and Yamato felt like a trespasser. No, this wasn't the time to catch up with him. He smiled and hoped it looked convincing. Nah, I just wanted to congratulate you. He turned away with his tray still in his hands and walked back towards one of the tables he remembered noticing his classmates. He stopped short when he realized they had left and now the table was empty. However, before he could look anywhere else for a space, he felt someone bump his shoulder. Any annoyance quickly evaporated when he noticed Tai Chi beside him, who was holding a tray of half-eaten food. Sora appeared on his other side and smiled. Looks like there's a spare table. The three sat down together and Yamato glanced between Tai Chi and Sora. I didn't mean to take you away from your teammates. Don't worry about it, Taichi dismissed Yamato's concerns with a wave of his hand. We haven't talked in ages. Why didn't you tell us you were going to be at our game? I just stumbled on it and ended up staying, Yamato blushed. I meant what I said, though. That last play was amazing. Taichi laughed. It was mostly Sora. I just took the glory. Oh, so now you're acting humble. Sora only managed to look annoyed for a few seconds before a smile broke through. Yamato sat back, marveling how easily they had fallen back into comfortable conversation. Mind if I join you guys? Hey, Koshiro! Koshiro nodded them politely before taking one of the spare seats. They began talking about how things had gone since the digital world and how they were readjusting to school. I didn't know we were having a meeting. All four turned just in time to see me... Mimi tugging along Joe, who was trying to hold his tray in one hand without it toppling over. She placed her tray on the table and dragged up a couple of chairs. Oh, how is everyone? It feels so long since we've met up. Yamato noticed out of the corner of his eye that other students were staring at them. Some were whispering to each other, questioning why a group of kids from different classes and years were sitting together. He was pulled back by Mimi's voice. Anyone else completely forgot what we were learning before summer? Joe sighed. I thought I was the only one suffering. Dad got a call from my teachers yesterday, Yamato confessed. My parents haven't gotten a call. That's because you're still near the bottom of the class, Tai Chi. Yamato was top of his class before summer. How do you know that, Sora? Joe interrupted before Sora could stammer out an excuse. Wait, Yamato's top of his class? Tell me your secret. I just said my teacher had called because my scores were bad. What if we started up a study group, suggested Koshiro. Mimi looked as if she was seriously considering the suggestion. But we're at different levels. Well, we could study at my house if we want somewhere quiet. My dad normally works late. Tai Chi jumped up, excited. What day is everyone free? The bell signaling the end of lunch rang before anyone could find a day that would be best. However, they agreed to discuss it again over lunch the next day. Yamato quickly made his way back to class and sat down at his desk. But before he could take out his books, the boy in front of him turned around. You're friends with Tai Chi? Yamato forced himself to nod. We met at summer camp. He's fun to be around, isn't he? I didn't think you were the type to get along with each other. The boy turned back around with a smile as the teacher walked in, leaving Yamato a little lost for words. However, no one else commented on his new friends in the days or weeks after. Slowly, Yamato's grades improved and everything settled in a sort of routine. Hiro Aki only gave Yamato a knowing smile when he came home early one day to find the kids sat around the table, talking and studying. And that was readjustment. Now, um, I like this one because it kind of went into uh, what may happen, you know, if you do 
kind of go away and it feels like months when it really is a couple hours. You kind of forget a couple things. So I, I really liked how they worked on that premise. Also, I apologize for some reason. People keep talking to me. I should have had this. It's on, that was actually on vibrate. That's how sad it was. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So I, I thought with how much information was put and how well that was... Uh, put into the story i thought it was well done i think that you know that that's actually the reason why I, I picked it this month if you liked it readjustment the story will be down below you can see a link to get to the fanfiction.net address for it you can also uh ah wow i'm sorry i just had a huge mind blank jade lee forrest their author profile because jade lee forrest was the one who wrote it i'm just schmucky duck reading it so that'll be down below as well and once again, if you enjoyed my reading of it, please let me know in the comments down below. I love talking with y'all. If you think someone else will enjoy it, please share it with them. That would just make my little heart sing. So thank you for listening. I appreciate it. And you guys have a good one. Ta-ta for now.